Kesa Kitui. Last but not least, those who read history know that he was not only a personal lawyer, he was a confident. He was always there. He was an aide. And on the day he died, he was right there by bedside. And Dr. Diambal Lel, whom you guys saw in the documentary, said in Luo, when Jaramogi breathed this last, Jim, which means, Jim, Mzea slipped through my hands. Your reflections, Governor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Prime Minister, uh, Raila Molodinga, and the Odinga family, uh, Mama Susan, and uh, the family. Uh, if I was to talk about Jaramogi, I would take a long time. But let me say, on this day, at this hour, I was at uh, the Agakan Hospital. I had come on a mission which Jarambogi had instructed me to write a letter to Nelson Mandela, which he wanted to be delivered. And he wanted a meeting between him and Nelson Mandela before Mandela became the president of South Africa. Jaramogi left us in January uh, 1994 and Mandela became president in May 1994. So it is a day I never really want sometimes to think about because I think history today would have been different. But I'm grateful to Olaro Tunu because the things that you said about Jaramogi, I would not want to repeat them, but because Jaramogi left us with a legacy of struggle. And I think those virtues of Jaramogi are important for us today. The virtue of wisdom, the virtue of justice, and the virtue of courage. And more importantly, when we are talking about courage, is not sh sheer bravery. It's more than that. And for Jaramogi, it also meant the co commitment to the th truth. So, I would feel happy if I could uh, say in a few words what Jaramogi desired of us those that they left behind. And I just want to read from his own book. And by the way, if you read Not Yet Uhuru, I want you to read the introduction by Jaramogi, read the preface by Kwame Nkrumah, and what I call a preamble and a dedication. Those, these three parts of Jaramogi's book are very important, thinking about the struggle today. And this is what Jaramogi said in this seminal book about the time. And I quote, when the political temperature, I may paraphrase in order to shorten, when the political temperature was highest, the youth and the women were the greatest single force of our struggle and its nerve center. The women created the political consciousness, and I'm grateful for what Jan Bogo is saying. The women created the political consciousness which sent the, the people to the polls, and it is they who voted to sweep our first independence government to power. The youth and women galvanized the people on whose support we rode to victory. They were never afraid of bullets, tear gas, or jail. And then in his dedication in this book, what does he say? And I quote, I dedicate this book the story of my life 
and political struggle to the youth of Kenya, my country, as the spirit of the youth carried us through our hardest days in the fight for independence, so on the youth, the ship, the youth will ship our new country, Kenya. So, looking at the struggle from 1994, without the youth, I think it would not have been where we were, we are today. Without the women, I don't think we, were, we would be where we are today. And I want to repeat that it is true that when there were meetings about the leadership of Ford, Jaramogi's preferred candidate was Wangari Madai. And you remember, to the end, in the elections that came, Wangari Madai still advocated for Jaramogi to become the second, the third pres president of the Republic of Kenya. Now, when you talk about courage, I have never seen somebody of that age so courageous. I remember an incident that when we went to Garissa for a political meeting and we carried all the political heavyweights to Garissa, including Martin Shikuku, uh, Kimani Wanyoike, Denis Akumu, uh, Buya Buya, and at the airport in Garissa, the military said we could not go through to go and hold a, a political meeting in Garissa. And when one of the people in Garissa offered a, a combi which found its way into the military, into the airport, some of us, whom I shall not mention, refused to enter that pickup. But Martin Shikuku was always very loud, sat at the back of the, <laughs> of the combi. And Jeromogi, of all the people, sat on the front. And he ordered the driver to drive through the, mill, the gate and the barrier that the military had put there. And we managed to pass through and get to Garissa town and held a meeting. And I remember Abuya crying that, oh, I've been hit by a stone. The dam in Atoko Komkone Yangu. And Jaramogi said, Unataka itoke maji. And uh, we ended up having a very successful meeting on, on that day. The second thing, if you read the book between what um, Nkrumah says and what Jaramogi says, is that on issues of principles, we should be steadfast. We should steadfast. And he cries in that book that the independence government was taken over by people who did not believe in the struggle. And today in Kenya, and I'm sorry, uh, my friend Korea is here. And you're my very good friend. If you look part, if you look at Kenya today, part of the problem that we have today is that those who are in power were never part of the struggle. And in this, we face a lot of challenges. And we must rededicate the struggle uh, in Kenya to make sure that the progressive movement attains what Jaramogi desired of us and is never too late. And I thank Raila Molodinga being steadfast in keeping this flame of freedom burning all the time. And I know it can, it can be done. The other thing that I remember about Jaramogi, and this is the last point, I think we are tired and late. There's a time when uh, through Jobo Mino, he had uh, organized for a meeting in London between him 
and uh, Tiny Roland to ask for funds for the campaign. And uh, Tiny Roland used to run a hotel in London uh, with Mohammed Gaddafi. As soon as we go to that hotel, Jaramogi, instead of just asking for a contribution, he went straight and told Tiny Roland that you people have exploited Africa and you have nothing to show. And the worst is that uh, Mozambique, Rhodesia, uh, what is Zimbabwe now, and Zambia could have become independent countries if Londo East Africa had not engaged with the reactionary forces, particularly in Mozambique. Now, when uh, Tony Roland walked out, uh, and I was trying to whisper to him, Jaduong, Koroki wacha mwata angwa yudu pasa inenadi. To wacha na, toko tamre okowe, na kwa yisedi yedi. So, when Tony Roland came back, he told him, I know you are Moe's friend, I will not stop you from giving him a contribution. But you must also give us a contribution. Uh, because you know we, we are the ones who stand for the truth. And a testimony to that, when Jaramogi died, Tiny Roland was here, you know, to say bye-bye to Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga. So this is a life that is very difficult to re replicate, but I think the legacy lives, and Kenya is in the right direct, uh, trajectory, if you follow the footsteps of Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you very much, Governor Orengo. I'll ask now the panelists, with the exception of Archbishop Okoth, to remain. And the rest can say it. Indeed, the political shadow of Jaramogi looms large from what we have seen today, from the talk we have had today, and from the aspirations that people still have. The program says that we should have the closing prayer, but I know you would stone me out of this podium if I went and said that Archbishop Okoth now give the closing prayer. And therefore, because of that, I want to invite the only one, the Honorable Raela Amolo Odinga to come and wrap up what has been a momentous day and therefore let's be upstanding as he comes to give the closing and wrap up remarks. Karibu. Thanks.